If you used a version of Windows prior to Windows 8, you're probably familiar with the set of card and board games that Microsoft included with these versions of the operating system. While Solitaire is probably the most familiar one, Microsoft had been including small games with Windows ever since the introduction of it, bundling a version of Reversi with Windows 1.0. And even though these games were cut from Windows 8, they still remain iconic. When Solitaire for Windows celebrated its 30th anniversary on May 22nd of this year, Microsoft estimated that there are still 35 million active players of Solitaire per month. But this video isn't about Solitaire. It's not even about Reversi. Today we're going to discuss another set of games that were both created and sold by Microsoft. They're known as the Microsoft Entertainment Packs, a collection of card, board, and puzzle games for Windows-based computers. It's in this set of packs where games like Minesweeper, Free Cell, and even Chess Titans, games that would be pre-installed on future releases of Windows, got their start. I'll be taking you through each of the six versions and talk about the games that were included and how they changed over the years. Let's get started. It all began back in 1990 with the release of Microsoft Entertainment Pack version 1.0. At this time, Windows 3.0 was the latest version of Windows, and computer games were still being developed and published primarily for MS-DOS. Windows didn't have the majority market share that it would gain in later years, so game developers and publishers couldn't justify creating games exclusively for Windows. Because of this, Microsoft had to develop each game in-house and publish it themselves. Releasing a game that only ran on Windows was very unusual for the time, but there was a reason for this. One of the major goals of the entertainment packs was to show consumers that Windows was not just a tool for large businesses and enterprises, but something that can be used by everyone, and what better way to do that than with a set of fun games. There were eight programs included in the first entertainment pack, and not all of them were games, but we'll get to that in a moment. There are two card games in this pack, Golf and Cruel, both solitaire games. In Golf, you have to clear all of the cards on the screen by moving cards that are one higher or lower in value than the card displayed at the bottom right. Just like in real Golf, you want to do this in as few moves as possible. In Cruel, you have to gather all four suits in order by rearranging cards at the bottom. Neither of these games would be installed by default in any version of Windows. But there is one game that was, Minesweeper. Yes, this entertainment pack features the very first Microsoft-developed Windows version of Minesweeper. The reason I say Windows version is because Microsoft originally developed this game for OS2 back when they were co-developing the operating system with IBM. It would later be ported to Windows for the release in this pack. Also included is Tetris, Tic Tactics, which is essentially a 3D tic-tac-toe variant, Taipei, which would later evolve into Mahjong Titans in Windows Vista, and Pegged, a puzzle game where you have to use the pegs to jump over each other, the goal being to be left with a single peg by the end of the game. But as I mentioned earlier, these packs didn't just include games. Sure, games were its primary focus, but pack number one contained Idlewild, which is a screensaver program definitely a useful thing to have. Idlewild would be seen in packs 2 and 3 with new screensavers, making it the only program from the original 4 entertainment packs to appear in more than one pack, aside from the best of pack, which I'll discuss later on. One year later, in 1991, Microsoft would follow up with the second release of the entertainment pack. This pack also contained 8 programs. FreeCell makes its debut and would later be bundled with Windows XP. There's also one additional card game called Tut's Tomb. This is another solitaire game where you have to move the cards from the pyramid to the foundation located on the right side. This is done by selecting two cards that add up to 13, or in the case of a king, just the one card. We also see the inclusion of some puzzle games. Jigsaw is pretty self-explanatory. It's a jigsaw puzzle. The cool thing is that you can select any image on your computer to use in the game. In Pipe Dream, you're given a source point and a selection of randomized pipe pieces on the left side to route the goo around the board. You want to try and use all of them to get the highest score, or if the level has an endpoint, route the goo to that point. 
In Rattler Race, you take on the role of a snake who has to eat every apple on the playing field while avoiding enemies. Rodent's Revenge is a trap-style game as you play as a mouse trying to avoid getting eaten by cats by trapping them using the blocks on screen. The last game included with this pack is Stones, a puzzle game where you have to place similar looking stones adjacent to each other and try to fill up the entire board. But like I mentioned earlier, this pack also includes an updated version of Idle Wild, which now contains 8 new screensavers. It didn't take long for Microsoft to release the next version of their entertainment pack, as pack number 3 was released the same year as pack number 2, in 1991. Just like the last two packs, this one contains 8 programs, 7 games, and the Idlewild screensaver program with 8 new screensavers. This version only includes one card game, Tri-Peaks. It's somewhat similar to Golf, as you have to move all the cards from the three peaks into the pile on the right, and you're only allowed to move a card that is one greater or less than the card already there. There are two puzzle games, Tetravex and Klotsky. In Tetravex, you have to place all the tiles on the board so that the four sides of each tile match with adjacent ones. Klotsky is a sliding block game. You have to arrange the smaller blocks to move the larger red block out of the square. Next up is a word-based game called WordZap. You're given a selection of letters and have to use them to form words while trying to beat the computer. We also have Fuji Golf, which is somewhat of a predecessor to Microsoft Golf that was released later on. Life Genesis, an adaption of Conway's Game of Life. And finally, Ski Free, which I'm sure needs no introduction to you. One year later, in 1992, Microsoft released the fourth version of the Entertainment Pack. This time around, there are seven applications, and all of them are games, as the Idlewild screensaver program has been dropped entirely. First up is Chess, which can be considered the predecessor to Chess Titans that was introduced with Windows Vista. But unlike that version, this one provides a move list along with the standard Captured Pieces area. It's obviously not 3D, but functions just like a chess program should. We also have Jez Ball. The game begins with a couple of bouncing balls, or atoms. You have to use the mouse to slowly decrease the size of the playing field to capture the atoms. The game will end when you have cleared at least 75% of the board, and you'll move on to the next level. Also included is Maxwell's Maniac. It's a similar concept to Jez Ball, and even uses some of the same visual assets and sound effects. But this time, you have to move the middle barrier to get all the atoms over to the red side. Tic Tac Drop is essentially Connect 4, but with some different boards available. Chips Challenge is a maze game where you have to collect all of the chips by navigating various obstacles around the board. Collect all of them within the specified time limit to move on to the next level. Next up is Go Figure, a math game where you're given a target number and blocks that contain both numbers and math functions. You have to use certain combinations of these blocks to get to the target value, and you only have a limited number of moves to do it. Definitely a cool addition. And finally, for the only card game in this pack, Dr. Blackjack. On the surface, it looks like any Blackjack computer game, but that's not all this program offers. What makes Dr. Blackjack unique is that it's more of a training program and is likely where it gets its name. As you play, the game will display various tips that will suggest better moves as necessary, helping you understand the game to improve your skill level. You can also turn these tips off if you just want to play a standard game of Blackjack against the computer. And those are the original set of four Microsoft Entertainment Packs. But there were actually two more releases in this series. First up is the Best of Microsoft Entertainment Pack, which is a collection of 13 of the most popular games from the original four packs. It includes Golf, Tetris, and Taipei from pack number one, Free Cell, Tut's Tomb, Pipe Dream, and Rodent's Revenge from pack two, Ski Free, Tri Peaks, and Tetravex from pack three, and finally Chips Challenge, Jez Ball, and Dr. Blackjack from pack four. This version was released in 1994, but there was also a version of this pack created for the Game Boy Color, and only includes seven games from the original four packs. From pack one, we've got Tick Tactics and Minesweeper, from pack two, Tut's Tomb and Free Cell, and from pack three, Ski Free, Tri Peaks, and Life Genesis. 
Yeah, this release didn't include any games from pack number 4, but it's still pretty cool that Microsoft allowed a version of the entertainment pack to be created for an entirely different platform. I say allowed to be created because this was one of the few entertainment packs that was not developed by Microsoft. There was also the Microsoft Entertainment Pack Puzzle Collection for both Windows and the Game Boy Color, released in 1997. And while these two games were not developed by Microsoft, they were designed by Tetris creator Alexei Pajitnov while he was working at Microsoft. And hey, maybe you're interested in learning a little bit about game design, or computer programming, or maybe you want to design your own board or card game. Whatever it may be, today's video sponsor, Skillshare, likely has a class for you. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that let you take the next step in your creative endeavors. Whether you're looking to learn a new skill or brush up on something you already know, Skillshare has something for you with classes on web development, photography, and video editing, just to name a few. One class that I started taking when I first discovered Skillshare is this one by Mike Vardy on keeping good productivity habits. Because the classes are entirely online in video form, you have full control over when to take the lessons. Most classes are under an hour in length, split up into multiple sections for more convenient viewing. And because Skillshare's focus is on learning, you'll enjoy the lessons free of advertisements and other interruptions. With Skillshare's premium plan, you'll get access to every class on the platform. And with an annual subscription, it costs under $10 a month. But today, Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 people who click the link in this video's description a free two-month trial of Skillshare Premium. So if you're interested, join Skillshare today and start learning. The set of entertainment packs from Microsoft is definitely an important chapter in the company's history. It helped to establish Windows as a viable gaming platform, selling half a million copies by 1992. But this doesn't include the amount of times that the games were copied and given out to friends and co-workers, as they included no form of copy protection. And believe it or not, this was done intentionally, as Microsoft saw the value in somebody realizing that Windows could be used for gaming through the use of these entertainment packs. And although some people may look at these games and say, oh, they're just card and puzzle games, but they help to prove that Windows was not just for executives and business people, but for the everyday consumer, and that was extremely valuable. And even though these games are 30 years old, they live on today in the games bundled with most versions of Windows, and even in the couple of recreations seen today in the Microsoft Store. That's all for today's episode. I want to thank you all very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to give it a like and get subscribed. And as always, I will see you in the next video.